In 1929, stocks lost 84% of their value over a three-year period. So, by 1932, they were trading back at the same value, that the Dow was back at the same value it had been in 1890. U.S. unemployment hit 24%, and growth fell 20% below trend. Economists looked at that, and that did not look like the efficient response of a system to a few minor shocks. And it led to the introduction of three new ideas. Uh, and to the extent that I think of myself as a Keynesian, it's because I think these ideas are fundamentally correct, even if their implementation is not. The first idea was that the economy is driven not just by fundamental shocks, shocks to technology, but confidence is extremely important. And one of the themes in the book that I've just, um, that I've just written, and in, in, in a, a technical version of the same book, called Expectations, Employment and Prices, one of the things I've tried to do there is to show how that can work, how, how, the, how making confidence an independent source of economic activity, how that fits with classical ideas. The second implication uh, of, of the new ideas that Keynes introduced was that in, rather thinking about the economy as a self-correcting mechanism that would quickly return to full employment, he introduced the idea that high unemployment, if left to itself, high unemployment could persist for a very long period of time. And we've seen evidence of that. He saw evidence of that in the United Kingdom in the 1920s. So the Great Depression in England started in the 1920s and persisted for two decades. In the US, we saw a period in the Great Depression of high unemployment for 10 years. In Japan, we've, we've seen a lost decade of output, which is still persisting today. And many other, several other Western countries have had periods of, of growth uh, of five or more years where, uh, where output was 20% or more below trend. So Great Depressions are, are actually common events in, in, in modern economic systems. So two ideas, confidence matters, high unemployment can persist. The third idea that Keynes introduced, which is particularly relevant for a talk in a policy school, is the notion that government had a responsibility to do something about that. So today it's really common to think about uh, the unemployment rate as something that that our, our political leaders should be taking care of. That idea was totally absent from, from the political and economic debate before the 1930s. And it's an idea that was introduced by Keynes uh, in, in the general theory. I told you I like physical analogies. Well, Keynes had a different physical analogy. He didn't use this one. This is my rendering of, of what I think his ideas were about. So instead of thinking about the rocking horse, Keynesian economics is like a boat on the ocean with a broken rudder. And the shocks to the system are the winds that blow the boat. So an airline pilot strike, a hurricane in New Orleans, the invention of a new technology that throws some people out of work. Those uh, winds, in Keynes's view, are winds that blow the boat and if you were to remove the winds, the boat could become becalmed anywhere on the ocean. So the difference in these physical analogies about viewing the world is that the classical system, the rocking horse model, has the rocking horse coming to rest at full employment, whereas the uh, Keynesian view has the boat becalmed anywhere you like. So in the absence of some kind of, uh, of policy in place to help correct things, the Keynesian vision was that you could end up with unemployment of 10%, 15%, 20% for a decade or more. And when Keynes was pushed on you know, how long a long time was in the 1920s, uh, he, he was famously quoted as saying, uh, uh, yes, in, you know, in the long run, full employment might be restored, but in the long run, we're all dead. Uh, so as a consequence of, 
of Keynesian policy and Keynesian ideas, uh, there were two changes introduced into Western democracies. Uh, one was uh, the introduction for the first time of fiscal policy, as you've seen now the fiscal stimulus, uh, that the, so the, the American Recovery and, uh, Act in, uh, in early 2009, I remember the exact title of the, of the thing, uh, that was a, 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 a roughly $800 billion stimulus introduced over two years. Now, that idea that in a recession or a depression, you should spend more rather than less is a Keynesian idea. Uh, before that, it was argued that in hard times, the government should tighten its belt just like everybody else. If tax revenues go down, we need to cut spending. Keynes looked at what was going on in the depression and he made a, a counter argument. He said, no, uh, if in, in times like a depression or a bad recession, there's actually, the government can actually do better by spending more because that will get people back to work. And there's an argument he introduced, which I actually don't think is right, but I'll, I'll run you through it anyway. It's an argument called the multiplier. And the idea would be that if the government spends $100, that gets somebody a job. Or let's say $100,000, that gets some people jobs. Those people now take the money they're earning, now that they're back employed, they spend some more money, that gets some more people working, those people go out and spend more money and you get a virtuous cycle that could end up increasing employment and increasing output by more than the money that the government spent in the first place. And that process by, of getting people back to work is supposed to raise tax revenues at the same time and thereby to help pay for itself. Uh, I'll tell you in a minute why I'm skeptical of that. The second thing that was introduced uh, after, as a consequence of Keynesian ideas, and I, I think this has been much more successful, was much more active monetary policy. The Federal Reserve System, the Central Bank of the United States, was uh, created in 1913, and ever since its creation, the Fed has been learning how to operate. And I think they've been doing a better and better job uh, they haven't always got things right, but uh, as a consequence of, of what they, they've been doing since World War II, and partly also as a consequence of the fiscal plans that were introduced, we've lived in a much more stable world since, uh, since the 1930s than we did before. And I'll show you some evidence of that. This is uh, the unemployment rate before and after Keynesian economics. And the big thing I want you to notice is that there have always been business cycles. Unemployment goes up and it comes down again. But the magnitude of the fluctuations that we've seen since World War II, the current crisis excluded, I, this, ended in, this slide ended in 2008, but we're now about, we're up to about here. But even with the current recession, we haven't seen anything like the magnitude of the recessions that we saw in the Great Depression, that's this episode here, and um, the, the panic of the late 1890s, another major depression in which unemployment went above 15% for, for one year and stayed above 10 for a protracted period of time. So this increased stability in the economy, in my view, is largely a consequence of these two kinds of stabilization policies. I'm going to argue these ones have been more effective than these ones, but uh, whichever way you look at it, policy has been effective. 